Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to have the opportunity to stand here to address such a distinguished audience today. Uh, let me start by saying a few words about my own background. My name is Han Chen Ling, who is the technical director in T2 Cloud. I lead the quality assurance team and uh, do a lot of DevOps and uh, OpenStack IND work in the past few years. Actually, before I joined the T2 Cloud, I have ever worked for Citrix over seven years and uh, pay all of my efforts on the Zen-related virtualization computing and uh, uh, cloud computing-related product test work. Uh, that's all about me. The subject of my presentation is the challenge of OpenStack performance optimization for 800 nodes in a single region. Actually, it's the practice that we did before. In the last year, we worked with our partner, China Railway Corporation, to verify whether the OpenStack can support 800 nodes and 100,000 virtual machines in a single region. And we make it happen. So today, I want to share our experience and uh, our idea and the solution to you. And uh, I'd like to have the further discussion. OK. Uh, I think most of you have no sense about our company. So I want to take up one minute to talk about our company in brief. Uh, T2 Cloud is the leading private cloud solution provider in China. Also, we are the startup. And uh, our core team is dedicated to OpenStack from the 2011. OK. And uh, we also the corporate sponsor in the OpenStack Foundation. We built the largest scale practice in transportation industry, uh, as I mentioned before, China Railway Corporation. And we have a great variety of products, including T2 Cloud OS, Magic Stack, HCI, and our hosted private cloud. OK, that's all about our company. Let's get back to the point. Let's take a look at our agenda today. Uh, my presentation is divided into four sections today. The first, in the first section, I want to talk about the background, and uh, you can uh, you can see what's the project goals and the architecture and the test we did before. And in the second section, I want to pay more most of my time to introduce the issues and the solution we provide. In the third section, I want to give you some configuration suggestion if you want to deploy it large scale the OpenStack cluster. And in the last one, I want to ha have some uh, conclusion. OK. Uh, let me take, the, uh, take a look at the background firstly. And, uh, and check what's the project goal. I think most of you definitely doubt what, why you accommodate so many nodes in a single region. Why do you separate them to different regions? It's ridiculous. Before I answer these questions, I want to let you know what client we are working for, China Railway Corporation. But who is the China Railway Corporation? China Railway Corporation is the largest and uh, unique railway in China. The China Railway Corporation has 2 million employees in China. And, uh, the total assets of railway corporation is up to about $700 billion. It's magnificent, right? And the railway mileage in China have already reached to 120,000 kilometers. And the high-speed railway is also up to 19,000 kilometers. And during the Spring Festival travel rush of this year, the China Railway Corporation dealt with 
about 400 billion person chips in 40 days, just 40 days. And uh, they carried over 700 billion tons commodity in the first quarter of this year. So it not only brings a tremendous challenge for a railway, but also the e-commerce website and their IT facility. And the China Railway Corporation is going to start moving their system to OpenStack. So we need to modify the stability, scalability, and the performance ahead. If we can put 800 nodes and 100,000 virtual machines in the single region, we have the sufficient confidence to persuade and then move as many as our their system into the open stack. So that's our purpose to do the verification. Okay, in this slide you can see uh, you can see our topologic diagram and uh, the hardware we use and the what test we did. Uh, to, in order to make the test more convincingly, actually all of the work Modification is based on uh, real productivity devices. You can see we uh, have three types of storage media, include SAS, SSD, and the PCIe SSD. Actually, the SSD and the PCIe SSD is worked as a uh, journal cache of SIF. And the, the test envi environment is consists of uh, 600 computer nodes, 117 storage nodes, three controller nodes, five safe more nodes, and uh, any other nodes work as bare metal, big data analysis, and uh, some monitor nodes. So all of the nodes is about 800. Okay, and we create 100 thousand virtual machines to verify the scalability of OpenStack and we make it happen. And uh, you can see we involve uh, iPerf, FIO, and Relay to test not only API performance, but also the storage and the network performance. And we have some dedicated automation test to the database and the RabbitMQ. And we mock up the OLAP and the OLTP running on the 100,000 virtual machines over 40 hours a day, seven days a week to make sure our open stack have the sufficient stability. Okay, that's all about the uh, test overview. And in this slide, you can see the architecture. You can see we. Uh, we, we have the three controller nodes and use the Red Hat 7.2 as our operating system and we use the uh, Liberty as our OpenStack version and uh, the MariaDB is our database and uh, we use the RabbitMQ as our uh, message queue and uh, we use KeepLive and uh, actually advocacy to uh, make sure the uh, high availability of uh, controller nodes. And uh, actually, we use the Linux bridge, but not the operating switch, because the uh, Linux bridge is more stable. OK. And uh, we use the sieve as our storage. OK. Let's move on to the uh, main section, the issues and the solutions. Uh, I got four things uh, I'd like to talk in this section, including my circle, Neutron, Keystone, and the sieve. OK, let's move on to our first part, my circle. Actually, in the course of our test, uh, we uh, encountered uh, my circle performance issue. And uh, we have some solution uh, to provide. So I want to talk about them. Uh, as we know, actually, the gallery cluster support multiple primary nodes. So theoretically, all of the DB requests can be leveraged to the different database nodes. So it seems like the mechanism is exceedingly 
reasonable and the performance will be good. But it did not work for OpenStack, definitely. Yeah. Let's have a diagnosis and find out the region, OK? Uh, suppose, uh, suppose two ch transactions want to update the same row simultaneously. Uh, Thread A and thread B will execute the slack for update firstly to get the same row simultaneously. And uh, the second step, the load balance will leverage the queries to different nodes, right? And uh, receive the same row for update. But let's presume the commi commit of thread A is accept firstly, and the bin log have already been synced up to other nodes successfully. So the thread B will return the data lock error because of the data inconsistency, right? So actually, we cannot make uh, these things happen. So as the community suggests, we need to replace the multiple primary to sing, single primary mode, so we can avoid the data lock. Just like the illustrator said, we have to enable the master and the backup mode in the HA proxy to uh, make all of the DB requests navigate to the same road exclusively. So in order to avoid that lock, we actually abandon the concurrency. So do we have our the choice? We don't want that log, but we need the concurrency too. Certainly, we have the solution. OK, let's uh, check the first chart of NOAA query uh, proportion. As our statistic said, actually, we can find uh, the, the request of rate accounts for 62% of the all of the NOAA database query. If we check the neutron, we can find the number is even reached to incredible 82%. And if we check the total query proportion, we can find the number is also up to 73%. Right, so we can include the most of our requests of database are read. So, if we cannot optimize read, why not optimize read? If we can optimize read, we can improve the performance significantly. Right? Okay, but. How to distinguish read from write? Our solution is involve the database proxy to split the workload. And we compare the different product, inclu including MySQL router, MySQL proxy, MacScale, and MyCat. And finally, we choose the MyCat as our choice. But today, I will not discuss the pros and the cons uh, about different products because I have uh, n no time to uh, expand them, OK? Let's check how the MyCat work. If the, if the rec uh, uh, <coughs> sorry. Let's suppose the VIP is in the control one, so all of the DB requests will be go to the Control one and the my cat in the control one will receive the DB request and it will uh, navigate the right request to the local DB. But if the request is the read request, it will be navigated to different data database. And if the my cat or the local variable DB is crashed, the VIP will fail over to the different nodes. Uh, Let's suppose the VIP is moved to the controller two. So the my cat in the controller two will be the hot spot. So all of the requests will be get to the my cat in the controller two, and 
the local database in the controller two will be become the right node. Okay. However, we really split the read or write for OpenStack. The answer is nope. Let's check what happened or what is it we encountered before. Before we elaborate the upcoming issue, I need to let you know how my cat distinguish read from write. If the statement includes slat, the my cat will treat it as read request. But others will be treated as write, including insert, update, and delete. But for the transaction, it's different. We will have the session variable auto commit to let my cat know who is the, uh, what is the read request and what is the write request. If the auto commit equate one, it means read. Or if the auto commit equate zero, the my cat will treat it as write. But the problem is we found all of the SQL statement in our test was wrapped into transaction with context auto commit equate zero. Why? The criminal is the SQL army. SQL army will construct session context with auto commit equate zero whatever read or write request. So we need to resolve this issue. If we cannot resolve this issue, we cannot distinguish read and read from write fundamentally, right? So our solution is change the SQL army logic to pass the read only statement uh, that is auto commit is to, to my circle and alert SQL army query commit and roll back logic when pass the read only statement. And because the SQL army don't expose any API to us to change the value, so we have to update or have to alert the logic of a SQL army. It seems like everything is, is okay now. So far, so good. But the fact is, it is still not work. Okay, let's check the second issue. Third point. I'm not sure uh, all of you know the third point means. I, I, I want to uh, ex explain what is the safe point in brief. Uh, safe, safe point is means the transaction, nested the transaction. The purpose of the safe point was supposed to save transaction rollback cost. So if the transaction failed, it can roll back to the specific point, but not to the start of the transaction. So it can save the cost. Right? But Newton used it to avoid that lock and the risk condition. Uh, we have the workaround to update the Newton code logic to remove save point tentatively because we haven't filed a, uh, our, cho our choice to make the save point happen because the MyCat did not support save point. Okay. Okay, that's all about what we did for my circle. And uh, in this slide, you can see we are going to investigate my circle group replication. As the my circle set, the group replication will have the uh, higher performance than the MariaDB, but we still need to do some tests, uh, not only about the performance, but, but also the functionality. Okay. Actually, we have the found some limitation of the group replication, such as uh, uh, the group replication require the primary key on every table. But as we know, some table in the neutral or the ironic actually have no the primary key, right? And uh, actually, my circle gr group replication have its own features and uh, his advantage. Like uh, you use the pixels and uh, have the conflict de de 
detection mechanism to avoid that lock and so on. Okay, that's uh, I we need to do in the future. Okay, let's move on to our second part, the neutron. The first bottleneck we encounter is the L2 population. As we know, L2 population is the mechanism driver of ML2 plugins, which tends to leverage the implements of overlay network by populating foreign table of virtual switches. The L2 population will decrease the broadcast traffic in the physical network fabric while using overlay network, right? Uh, the L2 population works in this way. If the port, ch if the port changed, like we put a VM in the host, the L2 agent will uh, scan any change on this ho host and uh, update the port status to the queue plugins in the RAM queue, and the neutron server will receive this message and uh, notify the L2 population mechanism driver to think out FDB entries to all of the L2 agents to, so, so that they can update their local forwarding table to up to date. Okay, it seems like the mechanism is extremely reasonable, but actually it has been proven that it's so easy to make a rapid MQ crushed in the cost of our test, large scale test. Okay, let's check what happened. Suppose there are multiple virtual machines, lambda is M, in multiple computer nodes, lambda is N, boots up simultaneously. So what happened? The total RPC messages will be M times N, but please don't forget, we have 100,000 virtual machines and uh, over 600 uh, computer nodes. It's an incredible disaster for RabbitMQ. So the RabbitMQ will crash if you put so many messages to RabbitMQ. Okay, we call it RPC storm. It's the first issue we encountered. And uh, suppose there are another scenario. We, there are multiple active ports. Lambda is X in all of the L2 agents. Lambda is Y are restarted in the same time, it will trigger extra request to ask DB to retrieve all of the FDB entries in the same network. And uh, X times Y message to RabbitMQ. It's also a disaster for mo both DB and RabbitMQ, right? So how to resolve it? Okay, our, our solution is to add the cache and uh, involve the zero MQ. If we can alleviate the pressure of the DB and the random MQ, actually we can resolve this issue. So we add the cache to relieve the pressure of the DB. Store the FDB entries in the mem memory as cache. And uh, if any change on the port, you, you, sorry. Uh, if uh, any change or a pause, pause happened, we we will update the cache immediately, and the L2 population mechanism driver only retrieve the FDB entries from the cache, but not the DB. So it can moderate the pressure of the database. Okay, and uh, if we can move the pressure from the RabbitMQ to somewhere. Actually, we can moderate the pressure of the RabbitMQ too. So we involve the high performance message queue, the zero MQ to resolve this issue. Uh, as we diagnosed before, we found 50% of the RabbitMQ message is the 
and true population thing out message. So that we need to move them to somewhere to the zero MQ. Okay. So we use the zero MQ to undertake the thing out message. Actually, the community have his his own idea and solution to alleviate the pressure of a rabbit MQ. Uh, I, but uh, before I el elaborate them, I need to point out the fact. If the message update, actually the L2 population, uh, po population mechanism driver will thin out all of the FDB entries to all of the L2 agents, agent, but it's not necessary. It just need to thin out the FDB entries to the relevant L2 agent, but not all of the L2 agent. Okay, so uh, the first and the second solution is to resolve this issue. And uh, the third one, the community provider is the uh, BAGP, uh, BAG pipe, sorry, B B BAG pipe, to use the uh, EVPA and the BGP to alleviate the pressure of the RabbitMQ. So RabbitMQ did not to undertake all of the uh, thing out message, move all of the pressure to the uh, BGP server, okay? If you have some interesting at the solution, you can refer to the, the link. Okay, the second issue of the neutron is the report state. In the, in the course of our test, we found a great majority of Linux bridge agents are down constantly. It needed to VM creation was failed. But what happened? Let me check the, uh, how the Linux bridge agent work. <coughs> the Linux bridge agent will report the configuration info to the Neutron server periodically. If the Neutron server uh, works well, it will update the message to the database and uh, mark the relevant Linux bridge agent as up. But if the Neutron server is busy, just like the large scale test, the Neutron server is busy, the Neutron server will not update the config info to the database and mark the Linux bridge agent as done. And if the Linux bridge agent did not receive any response from the Neutron server, it will think the Neutron server is so busy, so it needs to increase its interval to avoid uh, send, uh, and send, send many pressure to the Neutron server. And the Linux bridge agent will use the exponential back off algorithm to increase the interval. The default interval is 30 seconds, but the max interval will be increased into 300 seconds. And uh, uh, even worse, the interval will not be decreased back to the default interval until you restart the Linux bridge agent. It's, it's ridiculous. So we, uh, if, uh, if the interval is up to 300 seconds, actually it will lead to uh, all of the virtual machines scheduled to the host is failed constantly. So we have to resolve this issue. Uh, otherwise, we cannot provision 100,000 virtual machines in one day, okay? So we provide the First solution is we add the use local mode to permit the Linux bridge agent can update the MySQL directly and immediately. So it will not uh, bring the package to the Neutron server. And the second solution is to update the uh, Neutron logic to remove the exponential back off algorithm to fix the interval mode. Okay. Okay, let's move on to our third section, the keystone. Uh, 
in the course of our test, we found the keystone is hang up and uh, not to accept any request. It's so easy to make the keystone crushed. So have we analyzed and uh, uh, analyze the test report, uh, analyze the code, uh, we found uh, the massive request to, for token will lead to tremendous access to DB, but uh, the database cannot respond in time. So the keystone will hang up and cannot accept any request. The solution for, the, uh, for, for this issue, we can add the member cache and uh, add the member cache to Keystone, and the Keystone middleware, so all of the token will be stored in the uh, member cache, but not the DB. And the Keystone middleware will uh, verify the token, use the, use the member cache, but not the database too. And uh, if we check the illustry in your right hand, you can see uh, the NGX. NGX actually have the uh, 9,000 concurrency per second is higher than the WSGI. So we also uh, involve the NGX and the UWSGI to resolve this issue, to moderate the pressure of the keystone. And uh, we, ha we also have some configuration optimization like uh, uh, increase the number of the public worker and uh, uh, admin worker, and some uh, config options in the uh, in the NGX. Oh, okay, I think the time is against us, so I need to uh, expedite my speed. Okay, the second issue of the Keystone is the um, actually is not, not not a performance issue, but it's a high availability issue. When VIP move to the other controller nodes, actually we found spawning VM failed. But why? As we know, high variability mechanism is to resolve two types of issues. The first one is the data loss. The second one is the system downtime. But as we know, memory cache have no concept of cluster. So it just resolves the system downtime, but it will lost the data if the VIP moved from one controller to the other controller. And uh, it will lead to, uh, it will lead to, to an issue that NOVA will include the Neutron V2 to, uh, to verify the token, but in, uh, in the controller 2, actually we haven't the existed token, so it will, it, it will fail. It. So our solution is to uh, add logic to the to client v20 dot client by invoking reset state to reset a ring auth and the session. So if a request come in the next step, the token will be reapplied, so we can resolve this issue. Okay, the. Last, the last part of the issues and the solution, I want to talk about some, uh, something about the SIF. Okay, the problem is, in the course of our test, we found that most of OSD and the MOS are done constantly. And uh, uh, we, 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 uh, we found out the reason and fi figure out. And uh, actually, we use the default uh, message mode of the SIF. That is the simple. And uh, we found each OSD daemon will create about 1,000 threads in the test. The system resources are exhausted, especially the PID. So we need to resolve this issue. We enable async mode, but not the simple mode anymore. And uh, we increase the uh, maximum PID numbers in, in the files you, you, you see. In, in the PowerPoint, okay? And uh, the second issue we, we found is the thin flooding. We get the thin flooding error uh, in the log, and uh, we found we have to uh, increase the max sync backlog to over 
8,000, OK? And we also increase the number of the safe mall to avoid the safe mall is crushed. Because if the number of the water machines reach to 20,000, the safe mall is so easy to done, OK? And in this slide is our uh, third section. We, I, I provide some configuration suggestion. In the, in the left of the punctuation, you can see the config option. And in the right of the punctuation, you can see it's the default value. But you need to uh, adjust the value as your uh, real requirements in your open stack, OK? In different environments, you need to increase the number to different value. Inclusion. I need to tell you, we need to pay a lot of efforts to test and improve the performance of scalability and the stability before starting large-scale enterprise deployments. And uh, the second conclusion I will tell you is the fitness is the best, just like the, uh, using the uh, using the use local model or use the fixed interval in the, uh, to, to resolve the uh, report state issue, okay? And uh, the third one is to advise to real deploy 100,000 virtual machines in a single region because it will bring the exceedingly trouble into your operation. It will be operation disaster for you, okay? The last one, I want to say the more tests you do, more stable your cloud will be. Okay, thank you everyone. That's all about my presentation. <laughs> and if you have any questions, I think you can go c come to our booth. Our booth is A25 in the marketplace. Okay, thank you everyone. <laughs>